Hi and welcome to the Leader Autonomic Show. We have with us today Faustino John Lim. He is the founder and chief program director of the Center for Asia Leadership Initiatives. John used to be an educator. He also worked with the International Crisis Group and he was working with the Canadian Embassy in Korea. I sat down with John to find out his take on education and also why he's dedicating his career to building Asian leaders. All right, so John, uh, you are founder and chief program director of Center for Asia Leadership Initiatives. Um, you've had a really interesting past. You were a teacher at one stage, and then uh, you just you've had a really big career. Could you explain how you got to where you are yeah. today? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't think I've had that big of a career. <laughs> um, well, just to let you know a little bit about myself, I was born in Canada. Uh, my parents are af- actually ethnic Chinese right. from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. So I grew up, so they brought the family back when I was still young. And I grew up in the West, in Canada, but also in the, in the East, Southeast Asia and the Philippines. Mm. Uh, I went, after university, I went to China to study. And then I spent much of my 20s, my professional life in Korea. Mm. Part of that time was teaching. Right. But as you can see, I, I know it's a cliche these days, but I'm very, I feel very international, very yeah. global. Yeah. So when I go to certain cultures, sometimes I feel like I belong, but at the same time, sometimes I don't. I don't. Yeah. So I think I'm very adaptable that way. But in terms of teaching, um, Samuel and I actually ran an English camp before, and it was done with the, with the intention to really kind of raise next generation leaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, in our later career, we, we wanted to do something a little kind of more heavy. And uh, both of us were involved in, uh, I, I, was, I went to school at Yonsei University, but also the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, which is yes. connected to uh, students there can take classes at Harvard. Harvard, yes. And we wanted to develop um, a platform for like leader leaderonomics, mm. in which we can bring, we can partner with local organizations who can bring uh, emerging leaders, mm. young leaders, young students who want to, who can be inspired yeah. by, who can be trained with like the best practices that the world has to give, mm. has to offer. But well, at the same time, what makes you want to do that though? Because some people would say, I, I'm just going to have a great career on my own. Um, what, what, what made you want to do this? Why do I want to do this? Mm. I mean, I want my life to matter. Mm. I want, I want, I want society to change mm. for the better. I think the time where I knew I needed to make a difference in society was when I volunteered um, at my, I had many, several friends who were missionaries mm. in the Philippines and they, one of the families ran um, an orphanage and as well as a midwifery clinic. And, you know, the, the, the Bible, I'm a Christian, the Bible tells us to look out for the most vulnerable in society. Yeah. It's the orphans and widows. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I, I visited the, the orphanage uh, about once a week and all they needed was just, you know, someone t- to love them, to someone to, to be with them. Yeah. And I mean, that, may, that would make all the difference actually yeah. in their life. It wasn't fancy gadgets, it, w- yeah. it was just I being mean, there. J- the fact that like these kids were just abandoned. Mm. Some of them were found in the bathroom stall on the side of the road. And all they needed was just one person to hold them, one mm. person to kind of, to, 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 for them to know that someone would be there to kind of, to, to care about them, yeah. to hug them. So how much does a, a person's experience inform um, the way they, they perceive leadership. You've lived in so many different countries. You've, again, had, had these powerful experiences. What, how much do you think that's informed the way you are as a person? I mean, I'm someone who believes that it is nature also, as well as nurture. Mm. Uh, but I think anywhere you might be, um, I mean, 
whether whatever culture it might be, I think the most important thing is that you have, and or whatever life stage you're at, what I think it's most important that you have mentors、mm. that can challenge you, that can encourage you, and also set you straight if you're going the wrong way. Yeah.、Um, How do you find mentors? I mean, because there are really awkward ways of doing it. Walking <laughs> up to somebody you don't really know, they just think, "Oh, that's a great person." You go, "Can you be my mentor?" <laughs>、uh, so it's probably a way not to do it. But how do you find mentors? I mean, <laughs> to be honest, like I can, I'm the leader here、mm-hmm. of this fellowship program.、Mm. I mean, along with Samuel, of course. But I have, I have ten fellows, eight to ten fellows under me at one one time. But even though they're under me, I, it's it's actually an honor for me to be with them,、mm-hmm. and they mentor me. It's 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 just developing like a personal connection、mm-hmm. with them, knowing, you know, lifelong friendships, knowing that they care about the values that you care that you care about, and Kind of setting you straight sometimes, and that's not always easy.、Mm. Actually, that's very difficult sometimes. Even especially if you're have more authority than them, right? Yeah. So it's just it's it's bas- finding mentors is basically joining causes or organizations that you believe in, surrounding yourself with people who are like minded, who、mm. have the same values, and and just being just making friends with them especially、yeah. if they have more experience than you then of course i mean there are people there are people in this fellowship who are all actually older than me right i mean、mm. i do see them as mentors as role models、um, yeah i mean that i think that's on a professional sense of course i you know i have my parents and also my my older siblings、yeah. so i gu- i guess is the ability to Because sometimes we think it has to be a formal relationship, right? But what you're saying is that, or what I seem to be understanding is that we can really learn from from anyone. From anyone, and especially in Asia, when we think that a leader is like somebody who's you know in an official position, and、mm-hmm. we can only learn upwards,、mm-hmm. right, up to down.、Mm-hmm. It really, it can come from anywhere. Is that what? Is, I, is I mean, I, I I mean, I definitely agree.、Mm-hmm. Um, you know, every you know, people are just. Especially at Harvard, like people are so smart these days. <laughs> What do you mean these <laughs> days? I mean, people at Harvard have been smart all for all I guess, time. I guess so. <laughs> no, that's true. But it's just that you can learn from anyone,、yeah. and of course, I do have. I do kind of sometimes formalize the relationship、mm. in a sense, and I ask, "Hey, can you give me some advice? And you know, can I give you a call?" Especially if that relationship has been strengthened and developed.、Mm. But you know, asking just for advice on certain. On a certain issue area or an area in your life, an area you want to develop,、mm. you know they like all, my my fellows. I, I mean, I can't s- speak any more about them. I mean, they're just it's like an, really an honor to to always be, to s- surround myself with these people.、Um, I guess coming from an education background,、mm-hmm. uh, I'd like to know your take on educating and inspiring、um, someone. Let, let's talk about Asia, right? Okay, a, a person in Asia. In the twenty first century, do conventional methods work?、Uh, how do you how do you teach someone、uh, and make it relevant to today's world? Okay, basically, the way you have to think about it is that ch- the challenges that we face, like in the twenty first century, because、mm. everyone is getting so educated, even、yeah. like the value of a Harvard degree is getting lower just because the fact that、yeah. you can find it online. Right.、Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, they have Harvard X. They have、yes. all these. They have. They, there's so much. Resources out there, and people are kind of, in terms of at least work life,、mm. people are kind of rising above that level of. I don't know if that's the politically correct term, but rising above that level of kind of ignorance, I guess.、Mm. You know, in terms of like the what they the sophistication of their jobs, right? Yes. So they're not doing assembly line work、mm. any, in the factory anymore. They're going to work, and they're facing challenges and problems that. That there's no solution to. They have to figure it out、yeah. every day.、Yeah. That's that's. They have to be entrepreneurial, intrapreneurial every day. Entrepreneurial、mm. means within a large organization,、mm. and they have to. They have challenges to face, and you can't do that. You have to be creative. You have to be collaborative. You have、mm. to know the purpose of things. You need to. to you need to sh- give show leadership in certain sense. And how do you teach that? 
Okay, well, first of all, you can't teach it with information transfer. Mm. Um, we, we use a framework in, our, in, the, in a book that we're researching on. Uh, it's called Learning by Knowing, maybe like information transfer, right? Yeah. But you also have to do something with that yes. information, with that knowledge. Yes. You have to communicate and think critically yeah. with it. You have yeah. to be creative with that knowledge. You have to... Um, know when to apply it. You have to know when to apply it. You need to... Um, you need to create with it. Mm. Um, but then you also need to have... A, so you need to have innovative skills, I would mm. say, right? To create new solutions, new value. Yeah. But you also need leadership. You need mm. character. You need to ref, ha, You need to be adaptable. You need to be okay when someone criticizes you. Yeah. And, you know, you need, you need to be okay with failing. You need to be okay with failing. Mm. Resilience. Yeah. So, I mean, that's called learning by being, mm. right? Um, so in a, in a classroom setting, how do you teach these things? Is, is it, you know, I, I presume it can't just be, I'm going to teach you all these theories and then you just take it, because that's going back to just right. knowing, right? Is right. it just giving them life projects? and? Right. I mean... It's not that complicated. It's you just need a classroom that where you can, where professors and even students are asking good questions. Right. Because new that's that you you need questions to help people think critically to to, to have an independent mind mm. to think critically. You know, find the root cause of something. Mm. Not, you know, of of a of a complex issue, or to think creatively to come up with new ideas, yeah. ideate about something. Yeah. Right, and so, so the key is questions. Wait, no questions, and then you have to have work. People work, working in teams, right. right? You need they they need. I mean that because that's the nature of like real life. You have to work with other people. You have to learn together. Mm. You have to you have to have you have to know what's good for the group as well. You need to be able to the when you have a discussion, you have to know that your comment is actually adding to the learning of everyone else, right? Mm. So you need a group. Another thing is you need to have, you need classrooms, the co actual content to be relevant to them. So you have to somehow find ways to connect it to their real life. Yeah. You need, you know, you need, we have a class that where they actually, the, the class experience is a simulation and then they're analyzing, mm -hmm. like the, the, the teacher creates an awkward situation and sits down and then sometimes it's silent for 10 minutes. But the point is, it's a very, but it's a very orchestrated yeah. attempt to see which students will exercise initiative mm. by speaking first, because because the student, the teacher asked a question mm. and then no one answered. But um, that's great, and you yeah. learn actually for the participant, you learn yeah. so much about yourself as well. Exactly. So yeah. it, it, it so you basically it's making the content relevant to, and then the last thing is basically the last aspect is ma making students reflect mm. because. You know, we we go through life, but then we don't. It's kind of chaotic. We're like kind of on. Think of it of us like on the dance floor. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, go and, on. <laughs> oh, I mean, maybe you can take <laughs> with me with the lights. <laughs> take me there later. No, I'm just kidding. But then, uh, and then, but if you you stand on the on the balcony, mm -hmm. you're actually looking at what is happening, mm -hmm. where wh how people are moving to the music, how people are. Being uh, what decisions they're making, mm -hmm. what decisions you are making, thinking about your thinking, mm. right? So after you do that, you can think, uh, you can make better decisions because yeah. you you saw what just happened and yeah. you can make and you can improve upon it. And yeah. it's not just like a work skill; of course, it's a life skill. Mm. You know. Yeah. What do you define as a great leader? What does a great leader look like to you? I think a great leader. I mean, I have a. A technical definition which is like basically they're able to s go into any situation and diagnose it and then you know they, they don't they don't export their vision the, the first step is not exporting a vision and making everyone follow it but mm -hmm. first understanding what is needed in the situation and then coming up then helping people mobilize and then mm -hmm. move from a point A to a point B which, but and people don't know what point B is, but they have to learn how to get there, right? Mm. I see. I see that as greatly. And but it, it's a great leader is someone who is able to 
diagnose the situation because every situation might be different. Some situations might require more authoritative leadership, mm, yeah. or it might require a different style. Mm. It, but it but it will also require certain messages. It will require certain kind of demeanor, a certain tone, mm. a certain context that needs to be set. Yes, and that's not easy thing. Leadership is not easy at all. And it's I'm contextualized. It's very yeah. contextualized. But besides that, I would say. The, a great leader for me, the ones that I respect the most, are compassionate, mm. ethical, um, and just just caring, mm. right? So I, that's what a great leader is for me. So, so, so leadership, um, the character of a leader really matters, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on work-life balance? Now, obviously, if you want to be a great leader, you can you can really take on the responsibility of many things, yeah. and you just feel so compelled to do so many things, right? But where does work life balance come in? Oh, why are you asking me this question? <laughs> well, personally, I think this is my leadership failure because mm. I'm not. I don't. I I've just been so busy. I mean, there, the thing is, there's so many opportunities out there. There's actually so much room for impact. I mean, so many opportunities to create impact mm. that sometimes you neglect. Oftentimes, for me, you neglect your personal life. And I won't go into so many details, but I have honestly, I haven't figured this out. Yeah. Uh, but I think we're in the process of figuring that out. And I, I think um, maybe for sometimes my sanity, I, we we will need to do this. Yeah. Um, but Work-life balance. I mean, if you, it's the same thing. If if you don't stop to reflect on your life, then you won't know which direction you're going. Mm. You and you could be going the wrong direction. Sure. So and so, yeah. It's it's an essential part which I need to work on. Yeah, but maybe in between as well, it's taking a little bit of time off. And I mean, I don't know. I sitting think sitting down for enjoying. S- sipping your coffee <laughs> a little bit slower and thinking at the same time, maybe. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people are trying to figure it out. Okay, one last question. Okay. If um if I was a young person watching this and saying, I've got a lot to learn from John. Uh, I want to be a leader, the type of leader that he describes. What can I do, knowing that? Let's put this. Let's contextualize this to an Asian young person. Mm-hmm. What can I do to to really you know get those experiences, uh, exhibit those characteristics that, that you just talked about? What can I do? I think it's basically two things: just following your passions, all and any interests, looking at every opportunity that you might have, and trying to experience it. Because you won't know if something is feasible, or if something, if you're even interested in something, if unless you you don't you step through that door, right? Mm. So that's one thing. A second is to make sure that you can always surround yourself with good people. Mm. With people that care about you and that can sure. also challenge you and mentor you, yeah. um, people that can that can lead you down the right ways and also give you advice. Mm. So, I think that you know, as a leader, as a young person, you know, going into the workforce or going into into a, like a new opportunity, they they need to. Every situation will be different, and mm. every. Situation calls for a kind, a style of leadership that is needed, yeah. and it's it's not it's not something that is. There's no f- exact formula yeah. to it, mm. right? You have to, you, you know, we're human beings, and it's we're very trial compli- and error. It, we're complicated, reason, right? Yeah, yeah. But as long as you can always challenge yourself, mm. always open yourself to new experiences, get out of your comfort zone. Then, if you can do the, if you can be in, you, if you can put yourself in situations that do that, you're gonna inevitably stretch yourself. You're mm. gonna learn so much about yourself, mm. and that's that's my advice. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, thank you well, for your time. You're welcome. And so we've had John Lim here on the Leader Honoring Show. Thank you so much for joining us.